Hi everyone, I'm Heather with Burner Babies and today we're going to talk about a common question that I get a lot and that is what is the difference between a Bernese Mountain Dog and a Burner Doodle? So first we're going to start with the obvious things. The most obvious is obviously their hair coat. Um, I feel that a lot of people gravitate towards the Burner Doodle uh, because of the Bernese Mountain Dog and for whatever reason they either are allergic or they don't like the shedding of the Bernese Mountain Dog and so they gravitate to the Burner Doodle uh, because of the lack of shedding that the Burner Doodle has. So there are two types of Burner Doodles. You have the F1 and the F1 is 50% Bernese Mountain Dog and 50% Poodle. So with the F1s you tend to get little to no shedding. Um, the F1 Burner Doodles that I own they really only shed when I brush them so I don't get the seasonal shedding out of my F1 burner doodles that I get with the Bernese Mountain Dogs. And trust me when I say, my Bernese Mountain Dogs shed a lot. <laughs> um, I definitely get uh, the hair tumbleweeds in my kitchen, in my living room, in my bedroom, and definitely everywhere in the kennel. So um, the Bernese Mountain Dogs definitely, definitely shed, without a doubt. Um, if you currently own a Mer Bernese Mountain Dog, then you know it's on their hair is on your clothes, it's in your food, it's everywhere. It's just part of the diet at this point in your life, right? Especially if you own more than one, like me. So um, the Bernie, the Bernadoodles, uh, the F ones tend not to shed, and if they do, it it truly is very very minimal. And then the Burner Doodles also come in the F1B, at least here at Burner, Burner Babies, we have the F1s and the F1B. So what the Burn, F1B Burner Doodles are is 75% Poodle and 25% Bernese Mountain Dog. So then at that point you are breeding a Burner Doodle back with a Poodle. Um, those do not shed at all. They tend to have a more Poodle coat. Um, and so you get a tighter curl uh, more like a poodle. So in both the both types of burner doodles, the F1s and the F1Bs, the huge difference there besides the shedding is the grooming. So if, with the Bernese Mountain Dog, you really don't have to take them to a professional groomer if you don't want to. Um, routine baths, brushing, um, especially during the uh, shedding season, is really all you'll have to do. You could take them to a groomer to get like a hygienic clipping, things like that. Um, if you wanted to take them to a groomer to get blown out during the se shedding season, if I could talk, the shedding season, um, that would definitely cut down on the hairballs rolling through your kitchen. And that's really all you would have to do. With the burner doodles, you definitely have to take them to a groomer, I feel, unless you have some grooming experience yourself. Um, if you keep them long, you're going to have to take them to a groomer about every six weeks. If you keep them um, clipped, you know, shaved, um, every three months is suffice. So that is a huge difference between the Bernese Mountain Dog and the Burner Doodle um, is their hair coat and then the maintenance of their hair coat. Um, so I feel like that is probably one of the number one reason why people gravitate towards the Burner Doodle is, the, is their hair coat and the lack of shedding. Um, the hair coat of the Burner Doodle also makes them more hypoallergenic for those with allergies. So huge benefit to the Burner Doodle. So the next thing that we're gonna talk about <clears throat> is their size difference. So here at Burner Babies, we really have two size, two sizes. We have our minis, which are 50 pounds and under, and then we have our standards, which are 50 pounds and greater. Um, some of our standards, I'm sure you've seen on our Facebook page, can be 100 pounds. Um, really that comes out of only one of our females and her name is Charlie. She has huge genetics behind her. Um, and so we do have some that are as large as hundred pounds, but that is not typical. Um, most of them are between 50 and 70 pounds. And then we have our minis, which run between, um, I would say 35 and 50 pounds. So they come in two different sizes. So you can get them much smaller than your standard Bernese Mountain Dog. And then you, you have the size of the Bernese Mountain Dog. Our average female weighs about 100 pounds. Our average male runs about 120 to 125. So um, on average, if you take away Charlie's puppies, <laughs> um, the Burner Doodle is much smaller and can be much smaller. So those are for people who 
who love the temperament of maybe the Bernese Mountain Dog, but maybe not the size of the Bernese Mountain Dog. So great benefit there uh, for those that love the burner, but maybe not the size. So I say that is probably reason number two, that people gravitate towards the burner doodle versus the Bernese Mountain Dog. So I'm sorry, I have a little cheat sheet over here <laughs> that I keep referring to. So if you see my eyes jaunting that way, that's why. Um, so those are, I would say, the two most common things that I hear why somebody is picking uh, the Bernese Mountain Dog over, or I'm sorry, the Bernie Doodle over the Bernese Mountain Dog. So from my point of view, someone who has raised Bernese Mountain Dogs for a really long time, <laughs> since 2006, I don't want to say that how many years because it makes me feel old, but we're just going to say since 2006. My very first litter of Bernie Doodles, I was shocked. Um, by how outgoing they were right away. So I would say on average, my burner puppies start getting real personalities uh, between about six and seven weeks. That's when they truly, truly start coming out of their shell and you can see like the individual personalities of each puppy. My burner doodles though, they truly start wagging their tail about three weeks old and individually start coming out of their shell right away. Around three weeks old. I feel like as a breeder who really only raised the burners, to see an, a puppy at three weeks old start coming out as an individual so young is truly impressive. I, I think it speaks to how lazy of a breed the burner is compared to the burner doodle. So that's what we're gonna talk about next, is energy level. So the Poodle is a sporting breed, and the Bernese Mountain Dog is a working breed. And that is the difference right there. That is where the energy level comes in. Now here, for me, I am a low-key dog type of person. I love um, how low-key and chill the Bernese Mountain Dogs are. So when I picked my sires, my Poodle sires, it was important to me that my poodles also had that kind of low-key, chill personality. Now keep in mind, the smaller of a dog you get, the more energy level they tend to have. So Dudley um, is our poodle sire. He's very chill. He could be a burner. <laughs> he, is so he is so laid back and so low-key. And then Calvin, he has a little bit higher energy level, but also a great, amazing dog. When he comes in the house, so all my dogs come in the house at some point um, to kind of socialize and be with us and spend time inside. But when Calvin comes in the house, he is so laid back and so awesome. He just wants to veg with you on the couch. He's a great, great dog. And then there's Griffin who has more energy than both of them probably combined because he's a smaller dog. He's about 30 pounds or so. And But he, for a 30 pound dog, is amazing. I, he just is a great dog. I picked the perfect sires for what they're doing. They just are incredible dogs. But keep in mind, the smaller you go down in the burner doodle breed, the more energy level they have. So always keep that in the back of your mind when you're thinking about the burner doodle that fits best into your home if that's what you're looking for. So um, the energy level between the Bernese Mountain Dog and the burner doodle, the burner doodle will always win as far as energy. Every once in a while, you'll get a burner who's got higher energy, but it really is not the norm. Your burners usually want to veg out on the couch. They'll play for 20 minutes, and then they need an hour nap. That's even as a puppy. They are just a super low-key, chilled dog, even right away as puppies. They play in the playpen, and then they need an hour to recoup. It really is that way. The burner doodles could play for an hour, take a 10-minute nap, and go back for an hour. It's that way right away. So something that, that is very different. Um, your burner doodles are gonna be able to keep up with the kids for a longer amount of time versus the burners are gonna play with them and then go lay in the corner of the yard and just watch for a little bit. Um, that, is, that is a huge difference. So kind of keep that in mind when you're you know, weighing the pros and cons. Um, are you a more active family or are you a more low key watch TV on the couch type of family? you know, which, which fits better into your lifestyle. Okay, so the next things we're gonna talk about are health and lifespan. So we all know 
if you have followed the burner or have been a fan of the burner, researched the burn at all, we all know the health risks that come with these breeds, with this breed. Sorry, I swallowed wrong for a second. Um, we all know that there are a lot of health risks that follow the Bernese Mountain Dog. Um, if you've researched it at all, um, it is because they almost went extinct a couple of hundred years ago. And because of one man, we all have this amazing breed. Um, but to do that, there was a lot of interbreeding. And with interbreeding comes bad stuff, right? So here we are, breeders. We're trying to get all rid of all this bad stuff. Um, but unfortunately, we do have to work through that genetically. And so there are risks of cancers. There's risk of hip dysplasia. Um, you know, bad things. And so that has shortened their lifespan. Um, it's going up. When I started in 2006, the lifespan of a Bernice Mountain Dog was six to eight years. They've increased that now to eight to 10 years. So we're, we're getting there. We're fighting a good fight, right? Um, but it is eight to 10 years is their lifespan. With the standard burner doodle, um, <clears throat> it's about 12 years. With the minis, it's about 15. So the lifespan of the burner doodle being a mixed breed, you kind of get rid of that purebred junk um, and it does lengthen their lifespan. So that is a bonus for the burner doodle. Um, chalk that one up to them. That's, that's a, that's a good thing for the burner doodle. Um, and that is also a good thing that you get rid of that purebred, those purebred health risks. Um, we test exactly the same that we do for the purebreds, um, because they do individually carry health risks, the purebreds. Um, so we would hate to carry those health risks into um, the burner doodle puppy, um, so we test them exactly the same. Um, but they, they do tend to carry less risk, um, being that they are a mixed breed. And so um, they definitely win that column. So I thought it would be a good thing to put this video together and kind of tell you what the differences are between the purebreds and the Bernese Mountain Dog. Um, it is very unfortunate um, from my point of view being a breeder that raises both the purebreds and the burner doodles. I will tell you, um, before I started raising, this is kind of personal. <laughs> I don't, maybe, maybe I shouldn't post this, but I will tell you before I started raising the burner doodles, I was very anti doodle. Um, and it was nothing against them. Honestly, it was because I was so pro purebred. Um, I was very much in love with my Bernie snout dogs and I still very am much very, very much in love with my Bernese Mountain Dogs that I thought there was no reason to change something so perfect. And when my vet approached me and asked me to raise them, he approached me in a way that there's nobody better than you to raise them, Heather, because you're going to do it the right way. And so I took it as a compliment. You know, I, I truly did. And so I had been approached about it for several years before that, and I was always very anti, no, I'm not going to do it. And so when my vet approached me, um, I considered it because of who he was asking me to do it. And so we finally said yes, and we, we broke down and we did it. And I'm telling you, they are amazing dogs. I don't know why the world, the purebred world is so anti-doodle. I can't even really tell you why I was other than why I mess with the perfection of the burner. But I get it now. I, I truly do get it. And it's because I have wonderful poodle, poodles and I have wonderful doodles. My doodles are great dogs. My poodles are amazing dogs. <laughs> and I love them just the same as my burners. But I will always have burners. My burners aren't going anywhere. I will own them until I am dead, probably. Um, but I wish the purebred world would look at them in a different way. You know, um, in a different light. They have so much to bring to the world, to the people who can't own, like the purebred burner because of allergies or because of size or whatever the scenario might be in that particular person's life. Man, the burners are so great, right? I mean, the people who own them, man, look at the joy that a burner can bring to somebody's life. So what if we have to mix them with a poodle so somebody can have a burner? You know, who cares? Let them do it. So I just thought I would um, make this video about the differences. Um, maybe somebody's on the fence about which way to go. 
I don't think you can go wrong with either breed. It's just about which one fits into your lifestyle a little bit better than the next. They are both great dogs. I don't think you'll be disappointed with either one, quite honestly. Um, but if you have any questions about either breed, let me know. Now that I own both, raise both, um, I don't think I have a biased opinion because I love them both. So um, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. And as always, like and subscribe below for more videos. Bye, everyone. See ya.